to this discussion from some speech from uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, which is obviously uh, related to what we are discussing, and it's very appropriate and beautiful speech. And so this is from his book, uh, Madariju Salikin. And in here, he's uh, speaking about... Okay, so he's speaking about Inaba. Right, this is a chapter. Inaba means to turn back to Allah. To turn back to Allah. And in the context of this discussion, he's speaking how, about how a person, when does a person become a faqih, someone who understands the deen of Allah? When does he truly understand and fathom the deen of Allah? And he describes one of the traits and one of the characteristics that if a person possesses, then, you know, um, he, he's, he is a faqih, right? He is someone who truly understands the deen of Allah, and he also understands the reality of creation, right? So he says, فَإِنَّ مَنْ شَهِدَ فَإِنَّ مَنْ, فإن من شَهِدَ حَقِيقَةَ الْخَلْقَ وَأَجْزِهِمْ وَضَعْفِهِمْ وَتَقْسِيرِهِمْ بَلْ تَفْرِيطِهِمْ وَإِدَاعَتِهِمْ لِحَقِّ اللَّهِ وَإِقْبَالِهِمْ عَلَى غِيرِهِ وَبَيْئِهِمْ حَذَّهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ بِأَبْخَصَ الثَّمَنْ مِنْ هَذَا الْعَاجِلِ الْفَانِ لَمْ يَجِدْ بُدًّا مِنْ مَقْتِهِمْ وَلَمْ يُمْكِنُهُ وَلَمْ يُمْكِنُهُ غَيْرُ ذَلِكَ الْبَتَّ وَلَكِنْ إِذَا رَجَعَ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ وَحَالِهِ وَتَقْسِيرِهِ وَكَانَ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ كَانَ لِنَفْسِهِ أَشَدُّ مَقْتًا وَاسْتِهَانَةً so basically he says, he says, any person who observes the reality of the creatures, of the creation of, of men and women, and their kind of inability and their weakness and their shortcomings, rather their, you know, excessiveness and their wasting the right of Allah, their neglecting the right of Allah, and instead sees them turning to other than Allah and selling, you know, selling the, the, the share that they have been given by Allah for a miserable price, right? Meaning selling the religion or obedience to Allah, selling that for a miserable price, right? You know, selling it from, from, from what is uh, temporary and perishing in this life. So when he sees, so in other words, he's saying, when you look at the creation, you see them all, you see what they are doing, you see their behaviors, you see their actions, and you see how, you know, how quick they are to turn away from Allah. They neglect the rights of Allah, and they sell their souls and their like, aspects of the religion for a miserable price. And you observe that around you happening. Ibn al-Qayyim says that you find you are compelled, you are compelled to have hatred of them, right? Like you are kind of compelled when you observe these things, and it's not you are not able to have anything other than this hatred towards the creation in general, because let's face it, that's what you actually see from the creation in general, right? That's what you observe. And then he says, however, when he returns back to his own soul and the state of his own soul, when he when he turns back to his own soul. And he reflects upon the state of his own soul. And its own, shortcom its, own, its own shortcoming. And he is upon Basira with respect to that. كَانَ لِنَفْسِهِ أَشَدُّ مَقْتًا وَاسْتِحَانَةً فَهَذَا هُوَ الْفَقِيهِ Then he is, you know, he, he detests his own soul and belittles it even more so. And this is the one who is the faqih. This is the one who is the faqih, the one who truly has comprehension in uh, the religion. And then he says, then he continues and he says, you know, that when a person makes deep examination, when a person makes deep examination in, you know, looking at the soul and the various kind of motives and desires which are mixed in the soul and then he's able to distinguish 
that which is the right of his Lord from them and that which is the, you know, the share of his own self. He will find that most of them are actually a share for his own soul without him even realizing. So in other words, when a person introspects into his self and he makes deep examination and he looks at all of these, like the, the motivations, the intentions, the desires and what's driving his actions, what's driving his choices, what's driving, you know, everything. And he, and he tries to distinguish, okay, this one here is, is, is uh, truly uh, to fulfill the right of Allah. And this one here is actually a share of my own soul. When he does this, he will find that most of them, if not all of them, in them there is a share for his self in that, without him even realizing. Right. So this this is showing the uh, the the greatness of the issue of sincerity, and how sincerity to Allah is something that is, uh, you know, it's, it's a mighty affair to achieve. Uh, because of the way that you know a person can be filled with desires and motivations, and then he goes on to explain uh, Ibn Al Qayyim rahimullah. He says, "Fala ilaha illallah, kam fi nufus min ilalin wa aghradin wa hududin tamna ul amal an taqoon lillahi khalisatan." So he says, "So by he, uh, besides whom none is worthy of worship, how many ailments?" And objectives or desires and shares of the soul are there in the hearts that prevent the actions from being sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah and from reaching Him. قد استدارت عليه نطاقا وهو خالص لوجه الله لا يميز هذا من هذا إلا أهل البصائر وأتباء القلوب الآلمون بأدوائها وإلى لها. Look at this example he gives. He says, indeed, a servant can do an action where no man sees him at all. Right? So you can be completely hidden away from people, in private, nobody's watching you, there are no eyes upon you. And he does a deed, yet he is not sincere to Allah in that deed. When nobody sees him and observes him. And a man can do an action and all the eyes are fixed upon him, all the eyes are around him and fixed upon him. Yet he is sincere doing this for the sake of Allah you know in other words like just like uh, a man can do an action in front of a crowd and it's not for the sake of Allah and a man can do an action completely in secret in private and it is for the sake of Allah but it can also be the other, the other way around right a man can be completely in private and in secret he does an action and it's not for the sake of Allah because there are impulses motives and and you know things in his heart he's doing them for the whatever reason but he can be in front of a, a crowd with the eyes fixated upon him and yet he can still be sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah this is just the nature of of ikhlas this is a nature of what's inward no one really knows right and and then he says that no one can distinguish between this and that except the people of insight and the physicians the doctors of the hearts those who know of the treatments and the ailments you know who know the medicines and the ailments for, for the hearts right only those types of people who can distinguish okay is this sincere and purely for the sake of Allah and is this sincere and purely right these types of people <coughs> are the ones who know that then he goes on to explain something amazing and he explains to us from the moment because when when the moment an action starts, basically, it has two journeys to make, right? So the moment an action is initiated, the action has to traverse two journeys. 
This is basically what Ibn al qayyim is going to explain next. And it's really beautiful uh, two, two, two paragraphs. So think about this. He says, فَبَيْنَ amal وَبَيْنَ الْقَلْبِ masafatun." He says, between action and the heart is a journey, is a distance. Right? So when you physically do an action with the limbs, or it could be like a statement or whatever, you do an action, that action now conceptually has to make a journey to the heart. It has to reach the heart. Right? So it's now set off on the journey. And then Ibn Ibn al-Qaim says, وَفِي تِلْكَ الْمَسَافَةِ قُطَّاعِ تَمْنَعُ وُصُولَ الْعَمَلِ إِلَى الْقَلْبِ However, between that distance, in that journey, between that distance, as the, as the action now, once it's initiated and executed, and it makes its way to the heart, between that journey, there are قُطَّاعِ like Basically, there are... There are um, like, like, like you have highway robbers on a journey, right? You have thieves and robbers on a journey. You have people waiting. Similarly, there are certain things that on, 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 the, heart, on the action's journey to, to the heart, there are certain qutta'a, right? There are impediments, there are barriers. And so he says, فَيَكُونُ الرَّجُلْ كَثِيرُ الْعَمَلْ وَمَا وَصَلَ مِنْهُ إِلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ مَحَبَّةٌ وَلَا خَوْفٌ ولا رجاء ولا زحت في الدنيا ورغبة في الآخرة ولا نور يفرق به بين أولياء الله وعدائه وبين الحق والباطل ولا قوة في أمره right so he says for example a man could have great amounts of action but nothing is really reaching his heart nothing is arriving at his heart of things like Mahabba, love, fear, hope, or abstinence from the world, or being desirous of the hereafter, or nor is there developing in his heart any light by which he can distinguish who are the friends of Allah and who are his enemies, and nor distinguish between the truth and the falsehood, and nor does he have any kind of strength in his affair. Right? So in other words, that whereas what he's pointing out is that like righteous actions when when they are performed, they have an effect upon the heart, just like what happens in the heart has an effect upon the the limbs, right? So it's working both ways. So we know that the heart is the king of the body, and so whatever arises in the heart of things like love, fear, hope, reliance, aspira- you know, aspiring for the hereafter and fearing the hellfire and things like that, when these feelings happen, they are then dispatched to the limbs, And then the limbs do righteous deeds, right? So this is traffic in one direction. But also there's traffic in the other direction too. It works both ways. The actions of the limbs, they have a real tangible effect upon the heart as well, right? So the actions can also in turn, they can can, um, bring about further love and further fear and further hope and further light into the heart, right? So it's a two-way street. So here, what Ibn al-Qayyim is saying, that there are, a man can do a great amount of actions, but nothing is really reaching the heart, right? Nothing is going to the heart. So there is no love de- developing, no fear, no hope, and nor is there any light developing, which allows him to distinguish between truth and falsehood, and so on and so forth, right? And if, فَلَوْ وَصَلَ أَثَرُ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ لَسْتَنَارَ وَأَشْرَقَ وَرَأَى الْحَقَّ وَالْبَاطِلْ وَمَيَّزَ بَيْنَ أَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ وَأَعْدَائِهِ وَأَوْجَبَ لَهُ ذَلِكَ الْمَزِيدُ مِنَ الْأَحْوَالِ So if the effects of the actions were actually reaching his heart, then his heart would be illuminated and he would see the truth and falsehood and he would distinguish between the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah and the enemies of Allah and this would have, you know, brought about in him better increased, you know, uh, states, right? So, this now is the first journey that, are, that, are, that, that an action, once executed by the limbs, has to make to the heart. It may or it may not, not even reach the heart, right? Just like someone sets out on a journey with some cargo, 
right? So he's got his horse and he's got his you know cart at the back and he's on a journey. But on the way there are there are you know thieves, robbers, highwaymen, whatever, and it ends up that the cargo never even reaches the destination. In the same way, right? There is from the point of execution of the action to when it actually reaches the heart to have an effect upon the heart, there are things that can come in between that and the heart never really reaches it, right? This is why a, a person knows from his own experience that sometimes he does deeds, they have a tremendous effect upon his heart. And sometimes he does deeds and he feels nothing, right? He, he's not really feeling anything. And that's because in that journey, between in the middle of that journey, there are things which are preventing the, the effect from uh, taking place. But that's only the first journey, right? Then he says, ثُمَّ بَيْنَ الْقَلْبِ وَبَيْنَ الرَّبِّ مَسَافَةٌ Then from the heart and the Lord, between the heart and the Lord, there is a distance. There is a journey. Right? So this now is the second journey. وَعَلَيْهَا قُطَّعْ And upon them, upon it, upon this journey, there are Qutar, meaning things that, uh, like, like, you know, things that um, uh, uh, that are barriers and which prevent the action reaching to Allah. And what are those things? He said, "Min wa alihi qutar tamnau wusul al amal ilayhi min kibrin wa ijabin wa idlalin wa ru'yat al amal wa nisyan wa wa nisyan al minna." وَعِلَلٍ خَفِيَّةٌ لَوْ اسْتُقْسِيَ فِي طَلَبِهَا لَرُؤِيَ الْعَجَبِ وَمِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ And he continues, yeah. So the first part, he says, so upon it, there are barriers or impediments, just like, you know, thieves and highway robbers and things like that. They prevent the action reaching him, meaning the Lord. Such things as kibr, pride, and amazement, with oneself. Wa idlalin. Idlal meaning that you are basically, like whenever you try to make it look as if you, you've done a favor by way of your deeds, right? You're trying to recount favors that, as if you're doing favors to people through your deeds. Wa ru'yatil amal. Just looking at, 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 at the deed and forgetting the bounty and favor of, of Allah upon you. And likewise, there can be many hidden type of defects as well which are deep there, deeply there in the heart, which if they were deeply investigated and scrutinized and discovered, then, you know, uh, so people would, you know, you, you would be amazed at what, what you basically find. Meaning that if you deep dive deep down and make a deep examination of your soul, things which are lurking in there, you will find things like, you know, which, which surprise you. However, وَمِن رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى from the mercy of Allah the Most High, uh, you know, Sataraha ala akhtaril um, uh, uh, he says uh, that he has uh, basically concealed them. Sataraha ala akhtaril ummal. He has concealed these affairs from most of those people who, who do, who work, who do deeds. Because if they had seen them, إذ لو رأوها وعينوها if they had seen them and observed them, they would have fallen into what is even worse than them. مِنَ الْيَأَسِ وَالْقُنُوتِ وَالْإِسْتِحْسَارِ وَتَرْكِ الْأَمَلِ وَخَمُودُ الْعَزْمِ وَفَطُورُ الْحِمَّةِ فَطُورُ الْحِمَّةِ Right? So, so he says... So let, let's understand the, the general the meaning here that between the heart and it reaching the, 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 the journey of the action from the heart to, to its Lord, there are obviously things which, which, which lay in between, right? Which stop it from reaching. Like, like pride, arrogance, um, uh, sorry, pride and amazement with, my, with, with oneself and looking at one's actions and being amazed and forgetting Allah's favor. And likewise, there are many other hidden things which are present. These things are like uh, hidden, deep, and ordinarily speaking, we would not really be maybe aware. But if they could be scrutinized and investigated, like, you know, 
if you could get a microscope, just like you get a microscope, and it's you're able to see, able to see things you never could see before, right? Or, or or a telescope, and you see in the distance things you couldn't see before. In the same way, if if we just say, for you know, to, to imagine that we could do the same with with you know feelings and thoughts and emotions and intentions and motivations and desires, and you know, we look down, we could probably see things that we wouldn't ordinarily see. And what Ibn al-Qayyim is saying that if it is from Allah's mercy that he actually conceals them from people. Because if they had saw them with the vision of the eyes, then they would have fallen into something even worse than these things in themselves. And what is that? It is to completely despair of Allah's mercy and to totally abandon action and to feel defeated and to feel as if you can never ever win uh, never never uh, never ever achieve the forgiveness of Allah Azawajal and the mercy of Allah Azawajal and you would therefore abandon action and your azam your determination your zeal would basically dwindle and be eroded and the the you know the your himma your concern would basically just just wane and disappear right so that is even worse for you to basically just abandon all hope, despair, uh, abandon action, be demoralized, have no zeal or desire to act or do anything, that is even worse than acting and doing, even if there might be mixed in there somewhere, okay, a bit of riya, a bit of this, a bit of that, but which at least you can basically fight against and strive against and, and repel from yourself, right? That is even worse. So look at this, uh, what uh, Ibn al-Qayyim has mentioned for us here of uh, amazing speech and very simple to understand that an action basically has two journeys to traverse, right? A journey traversing from the limbs to the heart. It's got to get to the heart first with the meaning that the heart has to have the, the effect of that, right? And then there can be, like, like we said, there can be barriers, obstacles uh, in that journey, just like we have highwaymen, robbers, thieves, looters, things like that, on a, on a normal physical journey. And similarly, if it does reach the heart, once it reaches the heart and it has the effect upon the heart that it's supposed to have, right, then it's got to travel from there to Allah Azza wa Jal, right? And um, uh, here likewise, there are, there are uh, barriers and there are uh, hindrances uh, which, which, which prevent it from reaching uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. And so this really takes us back all the way back to the start of the lesson or the end of the previous lesson uh, and to uh, what the messenger of Islam, you know, how he warned his ummah about ar and mani shirk being, you know, akhfa min dabib in namal, more hidden than a creeping ant, you know, uh, in some narrations on a dark, uh, on, a, on a dark night, you know, on a, on a black uh, uh, rock or a stone. And the fact that the companions like Abu Bakr and Umar, uh, the supplications uh, that they used to make, fearing uh, the likes of this, um, all of this ties in perfectly well. And it shows that ikhlas is something that a person has to struggle to achieve. But once a person, you know, if a person achieves this ikhlas, then Allah will repel from him evil. And will repel from him al fahsha you know, falling into other sins. And this only occurs, like we said, if Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to Him than that which is besides them. Right? And that He loves only for the sake of Allah, not for any other reason. And all the other things that we mentioned, you know, about the reality of uh, ikhlas. So. What we'll do at this point, we, we can stop at this point. I mean, there is there is further continued discussion on this same uh, point, but we'll we'll bring it to a close for today's lesson, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll continue uh, the lesson or this discussion uh, in in the next lesson, inshallah ta'ala, next week at the same time. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Say that again? Is there any way to know if we're being sincere? No, you can never know. You know, um, 
there are, there are general signs and indications that you know from yourself that maybe Allah is giving you tawfiq. So you know that a righteous deed, the, the reward for a righteous deed is Allah gives you tawfiq for another righteous deed. Just like a sin uh, is often punished by you falling into more sin. Right? So in a general sense, you can know that you are moving in the right direction. Right? Are you increasing in your iman? Are you increasing in righteous actions? You know, uh, are the affairs of your deen being put to right? Or conversely, the other way around. Have you, have you increased in iman? Or have you decreased in iman from whatever? So in a general sense, you, you know the direction. You know, and, and obviously that's a sign that Allah is you know, giving you tawfiq and assistance and aid, whatever. But as for saying, you know, uh, and judging and knowing that I have been sincere, then this is not from the way of the, the companions and not from the way of uh, the, you know, the, the salaf. Rather, what you do is that uh, the, the correct way, as, as we've seen here, is that on the one hand, in fact, this is the very next discussion. This, this leads on. The answer to your question is, is what actually is discussed next, which is that basically we are in between fear and hope. So we hope that Allah accepts our deeds we, we try to be sincere and we hope Allah will accept and then at the same time we fear we fear that our deed will not be accepted because it may not be sincere but we never act as if ah yes that, that deed is in the bag it was sincere and it's accepted by Allah because as some of the Salaf said that if you have the knowledge that even one action of yours has been accepted by Allah well that's tantamount to saying that you know that you're in you know that you are in paradise do you understand so so the, the, the way that you uh, approach it is between fear and hope, right? So you hope that Allah will accept your deed and you fear that Allah will reject your deed. And it's in between these two states that we see that described in, in, in the Quran, the people of Iman, the people of Tawheed, the messengers and their followers. This is how they are basically described. Uh, they are between fear and hope. So no, we don't say, oh yes, I know I was sent. We don't speak like that. It's not the way that we speak. Sorry. You mentioned about um, when you're when you're alone, you can still fall into like you know things like things like riyah, like showing off. Yeah. Uh, what could be an example of you being alone completely and you're falling into like showing off? Say that again. Like if you're alone, you mentioned yeah. that if you're alone, yeah, and you're doing an action, yeah, and it's between that person's heart reaching Allah, what would be an example of like that? Um, yeah. Well, that's mentioned by Ibn al Qayyim. Like, it's not, not, it's not always the case that it has to be that you're doing it to win praise of other people because here there's no other people present. Yeah. Right. So, however, uh, Ibn al Qayyim mentioned a few other things like uh, Al Ijab, that you're amazed with the action, uh, or they have a feeling of amazement with the action, or, um, you know, even, even if no one's watching you, your intention could still be. Uh, that people come to know about it or you might later on speak with words and speech to to point them to it or things like that so it, it all comes down to like the states and feelings which are which are present uh, even when you're when you're alone you know what is it that you are desiring what is it that you're intending um, could be for example you are sat alone and you could be reading something you could be um, you know it could be uh, Let's say you could be preparing something to give to charity, but no one's watching you, you're there by yourself. But while you're by yourself, what is your motivation? It could be so the people later on there. So you're doing riyah there, no one's even watching you. Do you understand? Right? You don't need to be in a position where people are watching you for you to be doing riyah. Right? So you could be doing, and your, your intention there as you are doing it or whatever is, okay, you know, this, this is what people are going to say and whatever. Right? So, so yes, th this can happen. It doesn't have to be in the presence of people. Mm. It can be away from the eyes of people, but it, it's all down to what are you intending? What are your motivations? Is there any impulses? Is there any desires that, that are present, that are lurking around? And so that, that can be riya there and then. Right? And then obviously that in itself would be sin, but then when it actually happens, that when, when you are present, then that's just adding another you know, uh, ele level to it, element to it. Um, say for example, at the moment in time, your action is not sincere. For example, I want to give charge, for example. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to build a masjid now. 
Yeah. People are going to think you from my name. Yeah. Yeah. But later on, your intentions are purified. Like, what, what is that? What is that? Yeah, you can, you, you can like, like in the supplications, you can seek forgiveness for that. Okay. Um, you can make, you can repent from uh, these uh, insincere uh, motivations. As Toba applies to them. You can repent from them. Yes. Inshallah, Allah will make that. Uh, if you do that, um, you know, if 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 the deed. You started off initially for the sake of Allah and then corrupt intentions came and then you repel those corrupt intentions there's, That's no problem, right? There's nothing there. You repel them and you fought against them um, And if the deed from its beginning was uh, sincere uh, And then you fell into a riyah somewhere along the line and then later on you repented and whatever then also that's no problem You know, you can make tawbah and repent from that uh, Yeah Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll end uh, the lesson here for today, inshallah. So we'll just allow a few minutes for the sisters to uh, leave first. Inshallah, and the brothers will leave after a few minutes.